passing team. They need the magic, man. They need good pass protection, be able to throw the ball and not have turnovers. The last two times, the, the last time that these two teams played, the Packers had five turnovers. They can't do that today. And on the bare side of the field, the key cog in their offense, of course, is Neil Anderson, and he's got bad ribs. He's got a bad knee. What about his situation? I think it's the same thing. He's going to start. Will he be there in the third and the fourth quarter? Now, the Bears are running team. Mike Ditka says, if we're going to win today, we have to be able to run the football, and we have to tackle a heck of a lot better on defense than we did last week. And the weather situation, if you look at yesterday, it was 86 degrees. Today, it's 56. Wind yesterday, 23 miles an hour. Today, 22, but out of a different direction. Yesterday was sunny and warm. Today is cloudy and cold and damp and dreary and dark. Typical Packer Bear weather. As you can tell, it's windy, Pat, when you start off the game, the opening kickoff, and you have a holder there for the kicker. Chris Jakey is the kicker. Jackie it is. Dennis Gentry and Johnny Bailey back deep for the Bears. Why would a kicker wear number 13? Why would a kicker do anything? Except kick. And this is a good one. Way out of the end zone. Like five yards out of the end zone. Jim Harbaugh starts at quarterback for the Bears. Shaky week last week. And here's the offensive line in front of them. And they had a tough time against the Raiders. Running back Neil Anderson and Brad Muster, Dennis Gentry and Ron Morris will start at wide receiver. Lindy and Fonty, the Packer coach, was talking to us last night and he said we we're concerned about Anderson, but we can't forget about Muster. Tim Harris is starting with the Packers on defense. First and ten at the 20. Morris in motion with Anderson. Up to about the 26, stopped by Johnny Holland. And let's look at the Packer defense now. Up front, there are three, Brock, Nelson, and Brown. The linebackers, Steven and Noble. The corners, Holland, I beg your pardon, the outside linebacker, Steven. Now the secondary, Lee and Holmes, the corners. Green and Murphy, the two safety men. Second and four. Six-yard gain by Anderson on the first carry. Morris and Gentry both lined up to the right side. Gentry has a tight end this time. They're going to try to hide him. Out of sync. I think the whistle blew before the ball was snapped, so that's going to be probably a good idea. Number 57 offense, offense, still second down. I tell you, there's Harris. He's ready to go on defense. You see the right side of the bare line move. Harris is ready to play. He doesn't. He doesn't listen to that whistle. That's what they teach defensive players. You know, play to the whistle, and then they don't even have a whistle at practice. That'll make it second and nine, and Harris seems to be fine. Wide left. Back to throw it. Here comes the Packer blitz, almost intercepted. Bob Nelson got the hand up that knocked it away, intended for the tight end, James Thornton. Yeah, that's a different look, Pat. Sometimes they'll do that. They'll take the nose tackle, the big old nose tackle, up under the center, and he'll fake rush. He'll take on the center like he's going to rush, and then he'll drop back, and then and then adds another linebacker. Watch your nose tag. He starts up over the center. You see him just drop right back there in the middle? That's what he's doing. He's looking for that. Now, who would expect a big old 79 to be in the middle hook area? In the 10 years that we've been together, that's the first time that I think we've ever seen when they drop somebody with a back like that when he did them. Does it ever work? Our ball hits the victory. By Harris. Maury Buford is the bear for Jeff Burry. Back deep as you look at Mike Ditka. Buford averaged 
averaging 38 and a half yards per kick. This guy Query could be exciting, you know. He he has that speed, like four, three, five speed. If the first guys don't tackle him, he can get a long gainer on you. This will be into the wind that hangs up there pretty good. He shook a couple of tacklers and gets into their territory. Morris, he took him down. Don, the magic man. Matowski, the quarterback, 35-yard punt. 11-yard return. There's the offensive line. Billy Ard not playing. Moran starting at left guard. Ed West, the tight end. Woodside and Fullwood, the running back. Curry Kemp and Sterling Sharp will open it wide receiver. First and 10 tackers. At about the bare 48, two tight ends. That's all they have, just two. Fullwood is the lone setback that's sharp in motion. Happy, sharp behind him. Dan Hampton applied the pressure. The Bear defense up front. Armstrong, Curry, Hampton, and Dent. Rivera and Mar at the outside. Single Terry in the middle. Wolford and Simpson, the cornerback. Carrier, their number one draft choice, and Sean Gale, the safety man. Second and ten. <laughs> Matowski with a hand on him, a flag down on the play. He did get rid of the ball, but the penalty marker down early. against Cox. the Bears, though, Pat. They got the penetration, but they were also offside. Hey, that's one thing, you know, we talked to Dan Hampton, the Bears defensive lineman, and Richard Dent, and all those guys. Offside, number 54 defense, still second down. The man who got to the quarterback was the man who was also offside. Brian Cox, number 54. Jerry Seaman is the referee, by the way. I think what all those guys were talking about yesterday is Mikowski, that, you know, the things that he can do, how the way he passes, the way he scrambles, as, you know, things they have to do to him. They say the only way that the practice can beat him is with Mikowski or through Mikowski. And the Bears want to get some pressure up the middle against him. And over the chart to about the 27 yard line stopped by Carrier for a pick up at 17. You know the other thing they talk about Mikowski is how tough he is and I think he just showed it on this play. I mean he is going to get pressured. The Bears have flipped him so far every play. They got stunts, they got linebackers, but he hangs in there. He got hit just as he threw that ball, but he got it out there to Sterling Sharp. Here's the bear pressure, John. Yeah, just watch what happens. He's going to get hit just as he throws the ball. That sharp out there making a good cut. They played off him too much. Yeah, he looks uh, close to 100%. Sharp does. Take by Mikowski, and he's going to take off with it. Maybe not. He can't. Intended for Ed West and out of the end zone. That's what he's so good at. Throwing on the run. It doesn't make any difference, really, which direction. Well, that's the thing. And what that does, that just takes and buys him time. And then that's what bothers the defense, because all this time that he's running and moving out here, the defensive backs have to cover those receivers. They can't come up on him. So all this time that he's doing this, the receivers have to work to get open. And boy, that is tough on defensive backs. Second and ten from the 26. First quarter, no score. Mackenzie quickly. Harry Kemp dragged down at about the 21. Pick up a five. Hey, I think every pass that Mackenzie's thrown, though, he's been knocked down. Pat, he was just knocked down again on that one. And and as the Bears say, this is a tough guy, and and this defense is coming in to test test Mikowski's toughness because they're going to put him on the ground every play. 
Detroit beat Minnesota, a game that concerns both of these teams very much, a divisional game. Seattle over New England, and they have come alive in the last week. Back to timeout. No score with 11.08 left to play in the first quarter at Soldier Field. The Packers and the Bears. Soldier Field in Chicago. 141st meeting between the Packers and the Bears. In the second of the year between these two, Steve McMichael has joined the defensive front four, and he and Hanson are now the tackle. Perry gets the rest. Well, the team, the Bears are only using three defensive linemen much, but they are in this down. Mikowski off the leg of Sterling Sharp. Incomplete. Mark Carrier reacted quickly. Hey, on that series, the Packers knew that they had to win, so that was going to be a throwing series for them. And the Bears knew that they had to go after Mikowski, and they really did go after him. Chris Jackie was bracken holding. 16 out of his last 17. That'll keep his job for a while. Thirty-nine yards out. And good. And the Packers break on top. Three nothing. With exactly 11 minutes left to play in the first quarter, Green Bay three, Chicago nothing. The waters of Lake Michigan close by. The waters of Lake Michigan are a little angry. It would be tough to enjoy a soft drink out there today. <laughs> with a game going on like this, the Packers and the Bears, the oldest rivalry in football. What the heck the guys doing out there on the boat anyway? Probably trying to get home. Dennis Gentry and Bailey Deep. Six plays, the Packers. 27 yards, kept it a minute and 50 seconds. 39-yard field goal by Jackson. Packers lead it 3 nothing. Pat Summerall, John Madden, Soldier Field, Chicago. Typical, typical Bear Packer weather. Cold and damp, but at least the rain has ceased at the moment. up of 12. You know, that's the thing the Bears have to do, Pat, is they're, is they're never going to be with Harbaugh. They're never going to be a passing team, but they have to complete enough passes just to get first down, just to keep drives together. I mean, their offensive line is a, a run-blocking line. They have a great runner in Neil Anderson, strong defense. That's their football. That's the way Mike Ditka likes it. Leads the league in rushing. Harbaugh back again, got it away again. This time by Scott Stevens. And that's where a quarterback has to make a little adjustment. Scott Stevens came on a blitz and he wasn't blocked. Now, the quarterback has to be able to step up and throw around that. Watch Harbaugh, he's gonna look to his right. Stevens coming from his right. See, he's not blocked there. Now, the quarterback has to get the ball around that. You just step up, you just step back, but somehow you can't go through and unblock his blitzing linebacker. Second down. Bears at their own 32. Down 3-0. Norton was the move man. This is Anderson. Wrapped up from behind by Matt Brock. It is Green Bay Packer defensive lineman, Pat. They don't get much credit because they all have to play what they call two gaps. The nose tackle, both ends are two gappers, and if they have to play right into their man, then they're responsible for the gap on either side. 
So when they can make a play on a run, that's what they're in there for. Well, as uh, Coach Infante was saying last night, they're probably none of those three down linemen now to go with the, the next one. With a man just activated, Patterson, none of them are going to the Pro Bowl, probably. But they do what we ask them to. Flag on the play as Harbaugh comes out. And it was over before it started. Except for Tim Harris. I think Sean Patterson, the guy you were talking about, who they just activated, who is a pass rusher on this team, or was injured last year with a knee, and they're just getting him back. Paul Stars players in the snap. Number 62 offense. Still third down. I know it was him that uh, jumped offside, but they don't have a lot of pass rushers in this kind of defense, but Sean Patterson is one guy who can be one. Penalty was called against Mark Bort. Well, maybe he's aware of the athletic ability and quickness of Sean Patterson. Third down. You don't see many blonde-haired pass rushers. Timeout, Chicago. Timeout. That is their Bears. first timeout. And yeah, that's the first one they've used. Harbaugh comes over to visit with Ditka. And Greg Landry on your left, who's feeling much better. Back at Stormy Soldier Field. Stormy Lake, Michigan out there. Cincinnati over the Rams in the first quarter. That's the final now. The 49ers remain undefeated. Atlanta has just gone ahead of New Orleans. Touchdown pass by Chris Miller. That's the final. Miami wins. Indianapolis came from behind to upset Kansas City. Dallas beats the Buccaneers. Pittsburgh on the winning track. Here's Harbaugh. Diving for a first down. Mark Murphy came up to make sure he stayed down. I'll tell you, he, he knew where the first down thing was there, Pat. He had to dive head first. He couldn't have slid in there on this one because he is going to be right at the first down marker. Watch him here. He comes, he comes up the middle. He realizes he's going to have to run. Now he's looking out there, and he has to get just two yards short of that line. You're going to be close, but I think he made it. You know, that's the difference, because he has no protection when he goes in head first. But if he doesn't go in head first, he doesn't make it. That's a quarterback doing what he has to do to get the job done. So it's first down Bears at their own 42. Well, an interesting thing on that Bears sideline is now who calls the plays over there. Is it Greg Landry, the offensive coordinator, or is it Mike Ditka? Well, Mike said to us yesterday, it's done by committee. That means he does it when he wants to. He didn't say he was on a committee. to operate. Stopped by Jerry Holmes. Two-yard pickup. Johnny Holland there with an assist. There it is right there. There's the committee there. That's Ditka calling the play. Mike Ditka calls that one. Now they say usually when Ditka calls them, they're run. When Greg Landry calls them, they're passes. The chairman of the committee has on a different hat. That's a hat you play golf with in Scotland or Ireland or something. Second and nine. Mitchell walked off from the back of the crowd after he made the call. He didn't want to watch this one. Here's Anderson. Perhaps three or four stopped by Murphy. That was Ditka's call, and, and that was the run. Now he walks away. Landry calls it. See, he's not calling that one. Greg Landry is there making the call. So this is going to be a pass. <laughs> no one's going to figure that out sometimes. Just watch when Landry calls them their passes, when Ditka calls them their runs. Third and five. They're about their own 47-yard line, trailing 3-0. Caught by Glenn Kozlowski. Stopped by Ryan Pitt. 
pitch up there again. Now he's getting the ball to run. He's <laughs> getting up there, and he's going to get back. This is an interesting way to call play. Glenn Kozlowski's a tough guy. He was just activated today. He's, he's a favorite of Ditka's. He's a favorite of the fans here, and he's one of those guys who plays wide receiver, but but he plays it like a tough guy. Good special teams guy. He had the good haircut. Brigham Young. From the Packer 45. First to 10 there. Our ball outside Jensen. Talk about the favorites of Mike Ditka. Jerry Holmes on the top. He was just saying yesterday, I don't know what it is about Dennis Gentry, but when he's in the game, good things happen to us. And they just have to figure out how to get him the ball more. You know, he's starting now for Wendell Davis because he's injured, but other than that, he would always come in on, you know, as a third or fourth wide receiver and kick returner, but Ditka says we have to move him around and just get the ball in his hands more. He was the running back. Now they pretty well settled on him being a receiver. And the other teams, of course, know that as well. first down. I mean, they get cheers for first downs. They know that's the kind of offense this is. It's the offense. There's not going to be a lot of big plays, but you just get first down, play strong defense, especially when you're going into the win. If you're going to open it up, maybe open it up in the second and fourth quarter when you have the win. Three out. Muster in. And you know, he has those gloves on now, and the gloves are formed like pistols. So after he makes the sack, that's when he shoots his pistol. And he has the thumb and the first finger to be made like a pistol. You see how they're different colors there? So when he wants to shoot his gun, he already has his pistols made on the glove. He doesn't do it on the run. When he stops the run, he didn't shoot the pistol, only on the sack. Make it second and 14. Harbaugh has Stanton. First down, Bears stopped by Murphy. 16 yards on the pass completion. That was a good read by Jim Harbaugh. That's what they call a steam pass again against the zone. See number 80 Thornton? He's just going right. He's just splitting the zone. Kind of coming under control, getting behind the linebackers and in front of the secondary. That's why he came under control there. You know, that was a good steal. He, he really felt the zone. And he just sort of coasted in between the first layer and the second layer. Yeah, if he runs too fast, he'll get to that second layer. But as you say, when he comes under control, that was the time Harbaugh hit him. First down, Bears at the Packer 19. Harbaugh. No place to go with it. There's a Brock. bad quarterback back because there was a mix-up on that play. Someone went the wrong way. I'd like to see some fight in the quarterback there. That's good to get a mad quarterback. Shows he has some life in him. Look, he's waving guys off. He's chewing guys out. He had a couple of guys run into the same position. Watch it here. He has a guy coming in motion. Oh, that's what happened. It was Cap Bozo is going in motion, and he runs into the quarterback. No wonder the quarterback now. No wonder is right. Problems with the guys in the other colors. Take by Harbaugh. Thornton had it, juggled it, got it back, made the catch. A gain of 19. One of the more acrobatic catches you see. It's a bootleg. You see both backs go to the right. 
He looked, he faked to Muster, who was a short guy, threw it to Thornton, who was a deep guy. And Thornton had to do with the, the boop, boop, pooper <laughs> before he finally got it. First and goal at the five for the Bears. The Packers lead it 3 nothing. A minute 25 left to play in the first quarter. talking to the Bears and Mike Ditchie yesterday. This was the kind of drive that he wanted. And look who's coming in on offense now. This has to be the first time this year they let the fridge back in. William Perry. The crowd goes crazy. Well, I think the first time he did that was down here on the goal line against the Green Bay Packers. They listen at 3.15. But that's all they can do is listen because they can't win. Herring. You see the guy that made that play? It was Brian Noble. He was the guy that Herring ran over. Right. And what? Brian Noble wasn't going to be run over that time. You talk about a guy who got ready and brought his whole load. Watch Noble right there. I mean, he just put his head, his shoulder, and everything in there, and that stopped Perry right on the line of scrimmage. That has to be fun. I don't know. I don't know how fun it is for Noble to get hit by that load, but, but you kind of redeem things that have happened in the past. Perry's out. Buster and Anderson. Anderson cuts back. Good block up front by Tom Thayer. <laughs> Muster got a good lead block also. 18 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Kevin Butler. <laughs> Mike Tomzak holding. Bothered by a bad hit, but it all worked out now. That wasn't pretty, but it's good. The flag on the play. Gary Seaman. William Perry. Yeah, Perry not only plays defense and offense, but he's also the team spokesman. down there, number 79. Here with the glasses of chalk in the chair, Seaman. That's Aaron Pointer. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 72 offense. 15-yard penalty will be assessed, and we'll retry. Uh, against Perry, they're going to retry the extra point. Let's see what he did. Well, he's, he's a wing out there right at the top of the screen. See, he throws a right, and he missed. Oh, I don't know what he's called for for that. I mean, he looked he looked like he had the idea that he wanted to throw a right hand, but I think he I think he shot an air ball. <laughs> okay, there's Perry. What, uh, what's wrong with that? Yeah, he's got on Perry's number. <laughs> I tell you, that that makes a a field goal here for Butler. It makes a field goal out of an extra point and into the wind as well. Got everything settled down now. All right, everything's okay. Everyone settle down here, he's saying. And it's still good. All right, the refrigerator changed from being, being a refrigerator to being an oven. He's hot. Soldier Field in Chicago, the home of the Bears, who just took the lead 7-3 with 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. Touchdown run of two yards by Neil Anderson. Three yards, I think it. 
Evan Butler has a lot of close friends all of a sudden. That's the new thing you're doing. They're doing they all line up together, then they spread out into their normal coverage. Five guys on either side of the kicker. Wilson and Workman back deep for the Packers, fielded by West. At about the 27, and although they know each other very well, they're still not friends. Just came flying out of that picture. Johnny that Holland. Extra, watch that extra point again. Here's Terry here. Now you wonder what a wing does. See, we're looking at the clicker. He has the guy who goes inside and outside. The wing guy has two. So he pushes inside, pushes outside, and keeps that right leg there so the guy can't get penetration inside. Side and Haddock are well, the two running backs there. Haddock beaten. McCaskey drops the ball. Packers still have it. Richard Dent around the outside calls it. Yeah, well, Richard Dent, that's the way Richard Dent used to play. There's another fight breaking out here. Watch Dent, he's going to come from the left of the screen. He takes right there. McCaskey's looking right, then he's looking left. And here comes Richard going for Mikowski and stripping the ball. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Bears 7, the Packers 3. Of the National Football League is sponsored by the new generation of Oldsmobiles. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Levi's 505 and 506 jeans. And by United Airlines, serving over 200 cities in the U.S. and around the world. Come fly the friendly sky. at Soldier Field, Chicago, as we begin the second quarter. The Packers and the Bears. Bears lead at 7-3. Mikowski out of the spread. They still have no yards rushing. Pass incomplete. Intended for Weathers. Incomplete. Perry put the heat on Mikowski. Yeah, we look here, Pat. Uh, again, you know, they're, they're speeding the games up. Last week we did the giant game with two hours and 25 minutes and you can see fewer players uh, fewer plays the 89 nfl average was 39 plays per quarter and we had 31 in this game in the first quarter that's the kind of thing that the bears would like they kept the ball over 12 minutes the Packers still no yards on the ground and that's what their football is and that's what Packers football is if the Packers are going to win it they're going to win it throwing with mccowski and they realize that pocket the ball batted down by David Tate and very nearly intercepted. Yeah, Jim Morris, yeah, the Bears had a shot at Mikowski. He came right up the middle. Mikowski made a great job of making him miss to buy a little more time. But watch 51 Morris, he comes right there up the middle. Now how he misses Mikowski right there. When Mikowski makes him miss, then he steps up, then he goes inside, that all buys time. Or it didn't do him any good. John Bracken back to punt to Johnny Bailey. Against the win, the Bears had the block on. Bailey for a fair catch at the 48. The Bears will take over and for next Sunday, the NFL on CBS begins at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Then in the first part of our doubleheader, most of you will see the world champion San Francisco 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons, both of whom won today. Some of you will see the same Green Bay Packers visit the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then in the late games, many of you will see the NFC Eastern rivals, the Giants and the Redskins battle, where we'll be. Others will see Dallas at Phoenix all next Sunday here on CBS. About the 45, knocked out of bounds by Tiger Green. By Tiger Green. You see over there how Anderson finished off that run? I'll tell you, that's something that I've always liked. The guy they're working on there, the sideline, is Danelle Wolford, their starting corner. But I'll tell you, you know, a good running back doesn't just take a hit. A good running back finishes off a hit. 
in. He put that shoulder in there and start to throw. He, he took one, too, but he got out of bounds. Out of bounds. Second and seven. At the 45. Close to the first down. Stopped by Johnny Holland. Good blocking over there by Tom Fayer and Keith Van Horn. They got good movement in there. You know, Jay Hilgenberg, the center, Thayer, boom, Van Horn. They just got on there, guys, and moving. And watch the, the center on the right side of the line. See, they got a cross block there. Boom, boom. And that creates the hole, and Mustard just goes right through it. The old cross block. about a half yard. Allison wins his second game. His third win. Seattle over New England. He's off again to the muscle. First down there. Inside the 35 stopped by Robert Brown. That was a good cut by Muster there. He he started in the right side and then went back to the left. Look at that. The Bears eight first downs. The Packers only one. He just cut back. He starts to the right. There's nothing there. Now he feels that soft spot back to the left. And then when you get back to the left, then boom, take it up again. And look at how many Packers you find when you do that. Rushing for the Bears, none for the Packers. Muster again. In this game, Pat, the Bears have run 16 times, and the Packers haven't run one shot. But I think the big thing is, in that first quarter, is the Packers had the wind, but the Bears had the ball. They didn't have control of it. Now, in the second quarter, the Bears now have the wind and the ball. And they lead 7-3 with 12.25 left to play in the first half. Now Wolford over there looks like uh, trying to get that left leg going again. Looks like below the knee and above the ankle. The injury. Got it wrapped with some ice underneath, I'm sure. Second down. That was Anderson in motion. Here's Harbaugh by Harris. Now you'll see the pistol. Yeah, not a big one, see? Brings them out, shoots them a couple times, then he puts them away. You see, he has those gloves marked. You see, with the thumb and the and the first finger, and that's what makes the pistol. Now, watch him. He comes from here on the left. He gets Van Horn going to the outside, then comes underneath him and makes the sack. Every time these sackers go for a sack, they also go for the ball. Singletary was saying yesterday, I like him, Harris, when we're not playing. When we play against the Packers, I hate it. Pass caught by Kozlowski from Harbaugh. Murphy. Kozlowski trying to get another extra yard there. Say Harris almost got Harbaugh again. He used that same move on Van Horn. Watch him. He goes up the field here. Then he goes, boom, inside again. And then he just goes right there, and he's right at Harbaugh's legs as he threw it. This is going into today. In the last three years, the quarterback sack leaders, Harris, Kevin Green of the Rams, of whom we spoke a minute ago. Mark Taylor also has 35. And Reggie White of the Eagles. Those two guys can't do anything about it. Taylor and White because they're both off today. Lip coming. This is Anderson left side. Well, they tried for the first down and I don't think they got it. Brian Noble on the bottom of the pile. That was a big call and uh, the Bears went for it again. They probably felt it was Butler. They couldn't kick the field goal there. You don't want to punt in this situation. You hope to get the first down. They don't. Good strong defense by the Packers. So the Packers will take it over with 10.39 left to play in the first half. 7-3, the Bears still lead. Back at Soldier Field, Chicago, Pat Summerall with John Madden. The Bears lead 7-3. Advantage of the 
some oxygen. Packers just held the Bears as they went on fourth and short and didn't make it. Woodside in motion. a couple. Yeah, if we go back to the fourth down play, the Packers play well here, holding up. And then Noble comes from here. Boom, he hits that gap straight down the line, and he's the guy that makes the stop. But the onside holds the line. Watch 91. Noble comes through there, down the line, and makes the play so that it doesn't get past the first down marker. Noble's having a pretty good first half of this game. He really is. Second and 11 coming up. Fullwood is the lone setback for the Packers. That was their first rushing play. That's their second. Flag on the play. Again, Trace Armstrong on the bottom of the pile. Picked up four. Yeah, you see number 54 there. That's Ron Cox, who was the second round draft choice of the Packers this year. One of the juniors who came out that Mike Ditka really liked. And he said that he's going he's gonna to be a starter on this team before long. In fact, he got in the game right off the bat today. Offside, number 54 defense, still second down. And here he is right here, and you'll see him start to move. See, the ball didn't move. And he started, and he got in that neutral zone, which is right there, and that was the thing that they called. Ditka was saying yesterday, if you come close, he'll hit you. Nothing doing Armstrong for a loss of two. Fullwood, beg your pardon. There's Steve McMichael in there. Now the, the two tackles are McMichael and Perry, the two defensive tackles. You see they have a stunt. The ends come down. The tackles go out. McMichael worked to the outside and was there ready for the run. the many who didn't take part in much of training camp, a late signee. Third mate. Mikowski working against the wind. Clarence Weathers near a first down. That was about as near to a first down as you can get, Pat. I think that was right at the first down. Lindy and Fonte had Clarence Weathers at Cleveland. So he brought him in here as a plan B player saying he knew the system. So he's a very smart player. And again, on third down, you always have to know where that first down marker is, whether you're a ball carrier or a receiver, and get up beyond those sticks. They bring the sticks out to see. Clarence Weathers did get up beyond them. As you said, a very, very smart player. And a guy who knew the system. You know, the, the Packers have kind of an intricate system. They have a primary side and they have a back side. The primary side comes open quicker, the back side less quick. Michael knock everything backwards. Maybe he got a yard, maybe another. I think last week the Raiders ran so well, Pat, against the Bears that they've had that in their mind all week. I know Steve McMichael said there that, you know, we have to take the blame, the front line, and he says you might as well start right here. And you know that the Packers might do something different to him today, but they're not going to run on him like the Raiders did last week. Make it second and eight. McMichael. the Bears have been doing is, is even when Mikowski gets the ball off, they've been putting pressure on him all day. I mean, they got a guy, his feet aren't real settled in there. He has a little dancy feet. It seems like every time he throws the ball, they've hit him. 
And when you get hit by getting you know, like that, like a guy like Terry, you have to feel it. Mikowski is not sharp. That's one of the things, John, they thought they had to do was get some pressure up the middle so he couldn't step up like he does so well. Yeah, because they let the ends go up the field and Mikowski would step up inside and you have to have that pressure there so he can't step up inside. Caught by Weathers. That was unbelievable. That looked like it was planned. Weathers looked like he was expecting that. Mikowski says you have to be a little lucky, but watch Sean Gale, number 23. He's working to the outside, and right there, the ball is thrown. Sean Gale is going to come up. He tips the ball. And then Weathers just runs right under it like it was a volleyball set up for a fight. And a gain of 22. What number 95 did here after the play's over. He really threw a right hook at Ken Rutgers. Here's McCaffrey flying on the play. And the sweep at Fullwood. And then he dropped it. But the penalty marker down early. Did you see that right to Ken through? Yes. I heard it. And then they, they, they didn't see that one, and then on the next play, they call a penalty against the Packers for holding. Be unfair if it's against Rutgers, number 75. Holding, number 70 offense, still first down. Keith Euchre called for holding. Colt came from behind to beat Kansas City over Tampa Bay. And that Emmett Smith had a big day. Yep. They've been waiting for that to happen. First beat San Diego. Finally scored a touchdown. Now they can start to get off Joe Rolfe back for a little while. Woo! That guy's been taking pressure. First and 20. Mikowski out of the pocket gets the sterling sharp. He's still on his feet and sharp gets a Packer first down at about the 32. Pickup of 21 yards. Stopped by Morrissey and Vesty Jackson. You know, Sterling Sharp, again, didn't practice all week. He has bad ribs, and he didn't even practice yesterday. So you always wonder about the timing. But when you have a guy like Mikowski working like that, you see how he was able to get to the slide, then slide up the middle by a little time and get the ball out to Sterling Sharp, one of the top receivers in this league. Rutgers, the man down for the Packers. Bears leading Green Bay 7-3. Six and a half minutes left, first half. Bears 7, Packers 3. Six and a half minutes left to play in the first half of Soldier Field. Packers at the Bears 32-yard line. First and 10. Jackie Harris, the man in motion. Lofted it in that direction. Morrissey and Wolford were involved in the bear coverage. Alan Vingrad, uh, who was the starting uh, right tackle last year for the Packers. Mandrich is a starting right tackle now, but Vingrad is in there playing for Ken Rutgers. Oh, he's not now. He just went back out. Rutgers is back in. Vingrad came in for one play. The quick get well. Sometimes, you know, you, you get a D and it kind of scares the more than anything. You go over to the sideline and check your parts and you're all okay, so you just come right back in. Second and ten. Wood side on the move. Chased out of the pocket by the Bears. Finally gets rid of the ball incomplete. Intended for Sharp. He was running down the line and he got hit all the way down like a pinball. The first guy was McMichael hit him. And then someone else hit him, and then finally Sean Gale hit him before he got out of bounds and threw the ball. Or before he threw the ball and got out of bounds. A damp, dark, windy day at Soldier Field, Chicago, by the shores of Lake Michigan. Yesterday was up in the 80s, and today it's down in the 50s. I mean, this is what you expect in Chicago. Sure. I mean, the, you know, the Packers and the Bears, football on grass, wind, rain. Well, this is, this is football. This is what it's all about. We need more of this. Third and ten. Half 
Murphy again comes out. Or started out. Finally gets the ball out to Vince Workman. Stopped by John Roper. Hey, at that time, you have to give credit to the offensive line. That was pass protection. Did they do a job of pass protection? Watch the time he has here because of the blocking. Look at that blocking. I mean, they got that whole middle sewed up there. They got the right side. There was nothing out here in the left. Mikowski had time to look all over the field and finally get Workman out there. The Bears were in a three-man rush. Fourth down. And let's call it two. It's not quite that much. Timeout, Green Bay with 5.39 left in the first half and the Bears leading 7-3. to three. three, fourth and two. So far, Green Bay has rushed three times for a minus two yards. And that's why when they go to fourth down, that is going to be a form of four wide receivers, some kind of shotgun deal. This is a passing down for the Packers. The house is up under center. And Haddock is the back behind him. Pass is caught by Weathers. Flag on the play and a first down if it stands. I tell you one Gale, thing. Defender. Excuse me. No, just say one thing. Mikowski has proven. If he had to prove, I don't know that he ever had to, but he is one tough guy. I mean, he has hung in there against a heck of a pass rush, and it just seems like every time he throws the ball, he gets hit. Watch this. Fourth down, he needs the first down, boom. I mean, it's just every time he gets hit and thrown to the ground, they're just going to turn their head off. Fires in the pass, first down. First down, Packers. He takes great pride in, in that toughness you were talking about. Now look what he's done so far. He's only been sacked one time, but he's been hurried seven times. He's been knocked down seven times. He had a batted ball. I mean, the Bears have gone after him, but he's still been pretty successful. Two tight ends, this is one side. Stopped by McMichael and Morrissey. Six yards, however. Michael, uh, Mikowski was saying last night that that win against Detroit last week really helped him because, you know, they call him the magic man and they call him the cardiac pack. And he said sometimes until you do it that year, all it is is talk. But then when you do it, then that gives everyone confidence that you can do it again. Second and four. The 11, the pickup of perhaps two, stopped by Roper and Dent. See all those jerseys on there, all those Chicago Bear jerseys. I'm sure that on defense they talked about one, this week we got to tackle, and two, we have to gang tackle. Get a lot of defensive coaches like the term, get a lot of hats on the ball what Mike Ditko was saying yesterday. The one thing we didn't do last week, well, one of the things we didn't do last week against the Raiders was tackle very well. Third and two. Now he goes out of the script this time. He's going to take off. Close, but it's not a first down. Single carry and hot. Made the hit on the some collision there watch what happens here this is what it looks like when you start off there Lemuel Stimson number 32 you're a cover guy you're covered then you point hey he's running he's running now you have to turn from covering Sterling Sharp to get over there and try and help on the run but look at the collision at the end of that play Whew. that looked like a fullback running in there not a quarterback a yard game and they're a yard short fourth and one Singletary coming out. Well, it was Singletary in there, and Ron Cox was in there. This was an organized play. This was a run. This is like a quarterback draw. Field 
goal unit on. Jackie. 27 yards, perhaps 28. And it's good. So it's the Bears 7 now. And the Packers 6 with 319 left to go in the first half. Hey, Mike Singletary was a guy that went down on that hit. Anytime you would see a quarterback running and Singletary running at him, you'd expect the quarterback to get up limping. Not Mike Singletary. He's been one of the tough guys in this league for a long time. And one of the really serious individuals to play this game. Dedicated studies, not just books, but film and everything else connected. Yeah, and he's always kind of been the, you know, the, the heart and soul of this thing, along with the defensive line. And the other guy is Dan Hampton that has been the, you know, kind of the grit of this team. The guy that they said, uh, you know, maybe shouldn't come back. He's had 10 knee operations. But as he said, I want to go out on my terms. I'm going to play one more year. At the end of this year, I'm going to retire. Said he was watching A.J. Foyt. And someone said, how long are you going to keep driving? And A.J. Foyt says, as long as I want to. And Hampton said, I sort kind of, of like that. Sort of the same thought. <laughs> but you know, it was interesting. He said that he's looking forward to the end of it, that it's not something that he's thinking, you know, like, oh, this is the last time I'll ever play the Packers. It's a great story about him and his brother when they were back in Arkansas in high school or junior high. We'll get to when we have a chance. That's Johnny Bailey. Cut down at about the 22. Remember, tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, game three of the National League Championship Series with the Reds taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates at Three Rivers Stadium. Starting pitchers tomorrow's game will be Danny Jackson for Cincinnati as Zane Smith for the Pirates. Series tied at one game apiece. That's tomorrow at 3. Eastern time here on CBS. Tom Zach is the quarterback. Zach back to throw it. Gets it out to Musher. Musher outside the 30. A pickup of 9. Three minutes exactly remaining in the first half. This has to be a run. You see Ditka caller when he throws the tight end in there like Bozo. They just grab Bozo and throw him in there. That has to be a run. Mike Ditka told us yesterday that he wouldn't be afraid to go to Tom Sack, but I thought Harbaugh was doing pretty well. I, uh, and it doesn't look like he's hurt. He's standing right there in the sideline. About that much to go for a first down. You ever notice how Bozo, old cap Bozo, that guys just kind of throw him around, like the coach grabs him and throws him in there, then he comes off the side. Guys just grab Bozo for some reason. He got to the huddle with his feet never touching the ground. <laughs> he, and that has to be a short yardage play that Dick just sent in there. You know when Mike Dick recalls and put in Bozo there, it has to be a run. One or two, that should be enough for the first down. Stopped by Noble. The word on uh, Harbaugh is that he has bruised ribs. Yeah, because he was really playing pretty well, as you can see there. He was six out of eight, and uh, you know he was he was moving the team, so it had to be uh, an injury thing. Although he looked like he was fine in the sideline. Now they'll measure Mike Tomzak. Last year he was the starter at this time. Mike Tomsack's been around for six years and you know kind of up and down and on and off and when he gets a hot hand he can get real hot and when he gets a cold hand he can be frigid. Seven six. Nearing the two minute warning in the first half they might get one more playoff probably will. Pick up of 
seven, knocked out by Mark Murphy. Steve McMichael. That face has seen a few offensive guards. And still can play. It's an interesting thing, uh, Pat. You see Steve McMichael there with, you know, sleeveless, cold day. He believes it. And the guy next to him right there, Trace Armstrong, he, he has a sleeveless jersey too, but he doesn't believe it. He's from Arizona and Florida, and he said, I'll go along with this thing, but I really don't believe it like you and Hampton believe it. <laughs> Second and four. Back to Blitz coming at contact. Half almost picked off by Scott Stevens. Intended for Neil Anderson. Scott Stevens is thinking that he picked this one off, it would have been a touchdown, too. Look at that. That goes right out of his hands. Because if he could have caught that thing in the run, there wouldn't have been a bear between he and the end zone. No way. No chance. Coming up at halftime, of course, the NFL today with Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw with all the scores and highlights and surprises from around the league today. New Orleans. Colts beat Indianapolis. Colts beat Kansas City. Anderson comes in motion. Tom back to home plate. Scott Anderson. Mark Murphy. Wrestled Anderson down after a pickup of 29 yards. Look at the smile on Tom Sack's face. I think. Not only the completion, but they like that. They like that when that pump fake works. You know, they pump it, boom, they pump it that way. That holds the defense. Then, crap, they take it to the other way. First down, Bears, Packer 33. Minute 22 seconds left to play in the first half. 7 6. Bears lead. Munster. About the 28. Stopped by Johnny Holland and Bob Nelson. Well, the Bears have two timeouts here. Yeah, Greg Landry saying they can call one. But if you're going to call it, you better get it called. Well, they got it done finally with 56 seconds left. They have one left now. The Bears lead the Packers 7 6. It's an angry day in Chicago. Look at that wind blowing. That's what they call bluster. Bluster. You're passing, passing into a blustery wind. Mike Tomczak, the quarterback, second and five. Down to the Packer 28. Incomplete. Brian Noble, the closest Packer to him, they use five seconds for that. You know, with Kevin Butler being being bothered with that hip thing, you wonder how comfortable they are right now with a field goal or that they're in field goal range. The only thing would be that he's got a pretty good wind at his back. And of course, uh, Kevin Butler just seems to be so steady and over the years, especially here in this park. field goals in a lot of different weather in this park. No flag. Contact case. Almost completed it. To Anderson. We'll have a look at Butler. Sean Patterson put the pressure on. Well, again, you know, Van Horn finally got Tim Harris. You know, Tim Harris was given... Keep Van Horn trouble with that inside move. Van Horn got him blocked that time, and then he had pressure from the other side. Tom Zach will stay on to hold for Butler from 46 yards out. The Bears lead by one. There's some movement up front. Flags came flying from everywhere. Um, fair before the snap, so they'll move it back and make it more difficult. 
They, they've had trouble. Remember earlier, Perry uh, had a penalty on a on an extra point. Here you just see Thayer on the right side. He just started to move before the ball was snapped. So that adds five yards to Butler's kick. And that'll make it 51 yards. Short by three or four or five yards, Thayer's going to walk off the field with his head down. An offensive line, but when he's happy, he just gives a good spit. And he takes his helmet off immediately. Well, he should cover that up with a baseball hat, though. <laughs> or a <laughs> towel. <laughs> 42 seconds left to play. In the first half, it's the Bears 10, the Packers 6. They have just taken Jim Harbaugh to the dressing room. I would assume for x-rays before the rest of the team comes in. Nine plays, 45 yards, 51 yard, a 50 yard field goal officially now by, by Butler. Yeah, this is starting to look like a, a football game now, isn't it? I mean, with, yeah. you know, with, with dirt and with mud and with, you know, guys in yeah. cold weather and the bare plate jerseys. Butler kicking a field goal, have all his guys around him. Now he'll give him some little signal, and they're all going to run down and spread out and fake. <laughs> Look at that, it's a trick. It's a trick. So what did that buy you? I don't know. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. Summarize what happened so far. Jackie, a 39 yard field goal. Green Bay three, the Bears nothing, first quarter. And the Bears cut down on by Neil Anderson, three yard run, put them ahead 7 3. Jackie, a 27 yard field goal, 7 6 at that point in the second quarter. And then Kevin Butler just hit from 50 yards out to make it 10 6 Bears. Walter Payton, still very much a bear, very active. over the right side for gain of four clock running with just over 30 seconds remaining now hey, you talk about a big job how would you like to be the guy that has to move the fridge i mean that is an all-day job i mean you got to get square on them you got to move your legs you have to do all that thing and as lindy and finally says you have to get your mass of humanity on his Massive humanity. And you need some some wider humanity. And you're gonna you lose most of those humanity battles. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Bears 10. The Green Bay Packers 6. And my core is light, the one that won't slow you down. The silver bullet is the right beer now. A dark, windy, rainy day at Soldier Field, Chicago, where the Bears lead the Packers by the score of 10 to 6. And I think, John Madden, if you were looking for a key to the success of the, whichever team, I think the Packers' inability to run the ball has been one thing that certainly contributes. Well, you know, I think it's going to be that type of game. If the Packers are going to win the game today, they're going to have to win it with Don Mikowski. They're going to have to win it with pass protection and passing. And, of course, the wind is coming into play now because one way you're going, I think you can pass well, and then if the wind keeps whipping up here, it's going to be tough to pass in the other direction. That's when you'd like to have the wind. Now, on the other side, the Bears, they've done what they wanted to. They came in here, and they wanted to be able to run the ball. They've established that they can do that, and they've been able to keep 
the ball going and keep throwing just to get first down. You know, it's interesting if you talk to quarterbacks, I don't care who they are, and you ask them whether it's rain or ice or what, what do they dread most? And they all say it's the wind. Yeah, that's what Don Mikowski was saying last night. He said, I'll play in any kind of weather. I mean, it can be snow or rain or sleet. And he said, there's nothing that, that really bothers me as far as morning except the wind. And you say, every quarterback I've ever talked to has always said the wind is the most difficult time to throw. The Bears will kick it off. Here's that game kickoff. And again, I still don't know what that game's them. Gives them something to practice, something to think about, something to brag about. Makes the kicker think he's got a bunch of friends, maybe. The Packers will have the win in the third quarter. Going from left to right. Let's just have a look, John, how they did. Well, you see, the big thing is with the wind in the first half, he passed for 59 yards against the wind for only 22 yards. And Again, with a score 10 to 6, I think this is just what happened in the first half. And I think this is one of those games that's going to come down to the fourth quarter. That's 33. Well, Hampton and Perry, the two tackles, are strong and dense. Uh, the ends and the Bears defensive setup. That's Haddock. There's nothing there. Single Perry. Packers, they didn't have much to say. They didn't even run to the left one time. They ran five times up the middle for only eight yards, two times to the right. So they didn't run very well. They didn't run very much, and they didn't run at all to the left. That totals to 11 yards. You don't win a lot of games running for only 11 yards. Second. hit the umpire. He just got sandwiched in between the whole thing. Yeah, no, it was the left defensive end, Matt Brock. And again, when you got two gappers, you're not going to get a lot of sacks, but the two gappers have to push and get their hands up, not get put caught. So Green Bay gets the turnover back. Kowski goes back to throw. Up the middle. Clarence Weathers, the receiver. Pick up of six. For one thing, if you're going to have a turnover, the the big thing is turnovers and then the results of turnovers. So when you can turn the ball over and then the result of it is Scott still the tournament won by Andre Agassi. Got to the semifinal, that's right. Fifteen Re love for Rosset. Interesting. Renneberg was a wild card here. He would have gotten straight in, but for one spot in the draw that was taken by someone ranked higher. 12th ace for Rosé. But uh, he does spend some time here over Christmas and some time in the spring in Palm Springs. Though he and his family live in Houston. And then, so Charlie Passerell, the man in charge of this tournament, Valen King, gave him a wild card. It's Ultra Era, the power tool for stage. Georgia Carpet Out.
He's going to take Weathers on, try and take him on square, then let him get a little beyond him. Then Weathers had to work back for the hook, and Sean Gale was there already. Had he been running anything like an out or an in, he would have been in a lot better shape, but he had a hook right back to Gale. Rack in the punt. Bailey back deep for the Bears. Good kick. Bailey at the 19. He can make the miss. Johnny Holland takes him down. The Bears take over at their own 24-yard line after a 51-yard punt by Bracken. Rain continues. Summer all with John Madden. The Bears leading the Packers 10-6. In the third quarter, 12-24 remains. Bears have the ball to their own 24-yard line. Mike Tomzak, the quarterback. Buster and Anderson behind him. Both are in motion. This is Anderson. Not much doing. Brian Noble. Here you see Tim Harris there, and the Packers move him around. You know, where, wherever they think he can do the best. But today, he's lined up 29 times over here on the right side, working this side. He's only lined up four times on this side, and one time he is lined up in the middle. So he's doing most of his work from this side, the Packer right side of the defense against the left side of the Bear offense. Brings up the second and nine. Harris this time on the left. He doesn't want to carry that thing too long. 48-yard run by Anderson. I wonder, John, you know he has bad ribs. Maybe he's got some pads on underneath that jersey that won't enable him to feel the ball as well as he That's could. what I would have thought, but he didn't have the ball next to his side. The ball was hanging out. Mikowski. Intended for Haddock. Incomplete. That was sure a freak play. And we talked about Tim Harris, where he lined up. Now, Richard Dent says he likes what Harris does, so he wants to do the same thing. Now, he's lined up here, the right side, 25 times. He's lined up today in the middle six times, and he hasn't lined up over on this side yet. Richard Dent has four tackles and one sack, and he's been lining up primarily on his right side all day, where he is right now. Second and 10 ball up their own 34 as the weather gets worse. Here's Mikowski on the roll. Chased by Dent. Flag on the play. Out of bounds. Morrissey and Dent. Six-yard gain. No, but that Neil Anderson fumble is so big, Pat, because the, you know, the, the Bears were going against the wind to get a big play like that. Not only did they lose that play, but the Packers get the ball back.
They misread each other. Terry Kemp was the nearest tackle. Bracken will come on to punt. Magic was saying the toughest thing about holding out through the whole training camp was the read. He said that, you know, in reading and then being able, able to perform. Johnny Bailey back deep for the bear. Bracken to kick. Another good game. Not quite so high. Bailey will have a chance at this one. To about the 27, where the Bears will take over with 10 and a half minutes left to play third quarter. 48-yard punt this time by Bracken. And they're always going to double someone on the punt coverage. That was the guy they doubled. And that's the guy who's upset. And then when it hits, now you have the ground hitting the ball against those pads right there. Nine yard gain, second and one. Just an emotional time. Now that hits the muster. He'll have the pair first down. Matt Brock and Bob Nelson in the bottom of the pile for the tackle. This is the kind of game that Mike Ditka wanted. You know, that the, that the win, you go, you know, you know, you have the win, you have the elements, fair weather, you just run the ball, you run Neil Anderson, who's, who's probably going to get his 100 yards today, and you mix in your pullback there. Hey, there's a guy who's doing a good job today, Tony Mandridge. He's playing against Trace Armstrong. And I don't know that Trace Armstrong has made any more than one tackle if he's made that today. One I can remember. But that's about it. Far as the man motion, Anderson. No, Bailey. Thank you, Bart. Anderson gets a rest. Only a yard before he's stripped up by Noble. And when Tim Harris gets a rookie like Bailey, he's going to talk to him. He's going to say, hey, don't, don't come over here on my side. <laughs> Look at that. That got Tim Harris fired up. I think when he tried to run the rookie at him, I think that, that kind of got him going again. Well, to a man, when you ask the opponents about Tim Harris, they all say, hey, he talks too much, he says too much. I don't like the way he conducts himself, but they all also say he can back it up and does. Yeah, they have a lot of respect for Tim Harris. That goes right into the muster. Close to another bear first down before he's stopped by Bernal Dent. It was funny, one of the things that Lindy and Fonte told us last night was, was you know, you can be concerned with a lot of things on these uh, Bear team, but he said one thing I reminded the team is about Brad Buster. He said because he can do a lot of things that can hurt us, and he has over the years. First down, Bears. Soldier Field in Chicago. Temperature dropped 30 degrees overnight. The wind changed 
shifted direction. Brought some rain with it. Brought some bear packer weather with it. Mike Ditka sure looks subdued today, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. I think it's the hat. The hat will, will start it off on, on, on top of your body, but I think maybe being in control of the game helps too. That was Anderson. Stopped by Matt Brock. that combination of Ditka calling the play and Bozo going in, it has to be a run, even though it's second and long. You would think this would be a passing down, but I think when you see Ditka grab Bozo, I would think that would mean run. Although you look at that, and that doesn't mean run. No, that it means doesn't. Pass. It means it's time to grab Bozo. <laughs> for another bear first down. Knocked out by Brian Noble. A gain of 10. And a bear first. That was what did you call that time to play fake. Were you going to fake the run? You make a fake like it's a run. See, you fake there, you fake the handoff, you pull the guard out there, say are coming out, blocking Tim Harris, doing a good job. Then you sneak your fullback, Brad Muster, out, and he just picks up a first down. Well, they're going to measure what it did appear that he stepped on the first down marker. I tell you, Tom Fayer did a good job, too. Watch him. He comes out and blocks Tim Harris. Then they get a good block, and they both laugh about it. That's football. There's nothing worse than hitting the guy. Two guys colliding, and then they both laugh. Then you got to say they love it. You know, some guys, they struggle. You know, they always look like they got headaches and stuff, and... Yep, you know, and they, they don't enjoy it. Some guys love playing the game. Those are the good guys. Those two guys just say, hey, you didn't hurt me. <laughs> this is fun. We're having fun. And if you did, I'm not going to let you know it. But it should be fun. It's a game. I'm back. Oh, a flip coming. Got it out to Muster again. Muster gets another there first down. Mark Lee made the stop. A gain of 11. come into his own. You know, he's a, he's, a, he's a good blocker. He was a first-round draft choice, and a lot of people thought maybe the Bears made a mistake, but with his ability to block, you know, to run inside a little and to catch the ball, he's become a pretty big part of this offense. He's never going to be uh, what you call a slashing type runner, but he can perform those functions that you were just talking about. And help get that kind of possession for you. Anderson to about the 27 stopped by Noble again you know, if you have a, a Neil Anderson there of course he's not healthy today and he's still going to gain 100 yards I, mean, I, I think when you talk about the running backs in the National Football League I think Neil Anderson is right up there at the top but when you have a guy like Neil Anderson you don't need another one like him meaning a guy like Muster just be out of place. Nobody would be happy then. Yeah, right. Then you gotta, you know, have one in the bench and the other one. You need one to do the other thing. Second and seven. going in one direction and then Bozo came back across the drain and caught that pass. That's good for old Bozo. There's a group that's doing a good job today. The offensive line of the Bears. They had a tough week against the Raiders last week, but they're sure making up for it today. That group's been together for about five years and that's about how long it takes for, for an offensive line to become effective. It seems like they've been together for 32 years. I think they've been playing for that long. On the move, and this is Muster. Right side for maybe a yard stop by Matt Brock. No game. You just talk about the line. They sure didn't do it on that play. The Packer defense whipped him there in the line. 
Watch his line. Watch the white jersey control the line of scrimmage right there. There's no place for Muster to go. But the big thing, the Packers have the wind in this quarter, but they don't have the ball. That's the biggest thing this drive is doing for the Bears and against the Packers. to the Bear quarterbacks where where they don't get the ball past the line of scrimmage, where they where the defensive linemen do a good job of getting up and tipping it. It was Patterson who got the hand on it that time. Just activated for this game. Third and ten. fumbled it and he is really having trouble holding on to the ball and again you can't take the rip pads off and, and that has to be the problem the good news is that it appears that there is not a problem with his knee butler for 33 yards against the wind i'm back will hold plenty of distance but no good The Bears 10. And the Packers 6, 252 left third quarter. And in his contributions in the first three games, which the Bears won all, 36% of the yards and 45% of the points belong to Neil Anderson. Last week, when they lost to the Raiders, 14% of the yards, no points, and here's what he's done today. He scored the only touchdown. Koski throws it out to Darrell Thompson, or in that direction. Ray Armstrong leveled Koski, I think William Perry jumped off sides, although he's so quick off the ball, it's difficult to tell. Koski, yeah, you hate to see the quarterback go down and grab that arm, even though it's the left arm. Offside, number 72 defense. Still for See what happened to McCaskey. Again, this has been happening to him all day. I mean, that's getting whipsawed. He gets Armstrong in the front and Dent in the back. And one thing, they haven't had a lot of sacks against McCaskey, but they have sure banged him around a lot. First and five. Woodside stood out wide to the right this time. but not quite. Donnell Wolfie almost came up with the interception. I think there's a certain amount of urgency on this Packer team now because they know that, you know that they have to get something going. There's Mandrich going against Trace Armstrong. Both of them look like they have headlocks on each other. That's pretty good pass protection, though. When you're a tackle, you just have to do anything you can to keep that end off your quarterback. Nikowski is 7 out of 20 for 87 yards. In a very difficult day, both by the Bears defense and by the weather. Fumble! And the Bears had it. Richard Dent came up with the ball. Coming out of the 
with a handoff, it went right through his arm. And the ball bounces and watch Dent come leaping for it. That handoff just slid right through. He didn't stop in the middle. I think that was the thing that Lindy and Swanee was more worried last night than anything. The turnover. Brought the turnover. First and 10 Bears. 12 stopped by Brian Noble. I think Neil Anderson is hurt there, but again, we've talked all day that he's been hurt all day. He has bad ribs, he has a bad knee. Well, we were talking with Johnny Rowland yesterday. He was a fine running back himself, and now a bear assisted. He said, You know, he said to you, you know. You're never ha ne never healthy after the first week. I think that Neil Anderson has been a real warrior today that probably if we were anything else or any other type of game, he wouldn't play. But I think I think the problem he's having is when he's falling, he has to keep the ball in there and he's falling on the ball. I think you're exactly right. And then when you have bad ribs, I think that's just putting all that pressure as it comes down right on the rip. There's his backup. Ricky Bailey. Hey, Neil Anderson has done what he's had to do for the Bears today. As he said earlier when he comes out of that tunnel and he knows the Packers are on that other end, he'll be ready. Played awfully hard and awfully tough today. So Bailey, Johnny Bailey, takes his place. Not quite as big as Anderson. Very quick. Weighs about 180. Muster. Muster breaks one tackle. Stopped finally by Noble. Will get five yards out of it. Hunter's fired up today. I mean, part of it, of course, is playing at home. Good crowd here. Part of it is playing against the Packers, division rivalry. Part of it, I think, is that Stanford beat Notre Dame yesterday. Yes. And that's Stanford's player. You know, who would have thought that one? Who would have thought? First and goal at the six. And the Bears have done an outstanding job in this quarter of football. They really have. They kept they the ball. The game. This is where they won. It's Bailey and Muster behind contact. Here's contact. Nobody's in the same with ball yard. Bears leading 17-6. That's 
play the Bears did and it's such an outstanding job was to shut out the Packers in the third quarter when they had the win and know that they had to pass the ball and then have that ball control offense. Mike Victor will be happy tonight if this game keeps going this way because this is the type of football game that he likes. When they went to the Super Bowl, well, they had that dominating defense that year. This was the kind of offense they ran. They ran the ball. Down there in the sideline now, not a uniform, Walter Payton, remember that? Yes. Ball gets away from Charles Wilson. He's out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. A return of 12. Michael now will be the two inside men on the third defense. Armstrong and Dent remain the end. All over Mikowski, Daryl Thompson takes the pass. Richard Dent and Trace Armstrong were right at his face. I don't know that Mikowski's ever had as much pressure as he's getting today, although Kansas City gave him a, a big rush the other day. But the game started out this way, Pat, with always a bear or two hanging on Mikowski, and it's gone the whole game. Every time he's thrown, there's been one or two of those bear guys hanging on. Perry getting a good push up the middle. Two outside people putting his, the real pressure on the cap. Back to throw it again. Sterling Sharp is the receiver. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Bears 17, the Packers 6. Our coverage will continue at Chicago leading Green Bay 17 6. And the oldest rivalry in the history of professional football. Green Bay has the ball at their own 24. He starts quarter number four. Sterling Sharp should be gone. Touchdown Packers. That's what Sterling Sharp does. That's what speed does. The Packers couldn't do anything when they had to win. They finally went against the win. And boom, they hit Sterling Sharp, and he is a game-breaker. That's Mark Carrier, the injured bear. Here it is. Well, just watch Sharp out here down in the bottom of the thing right there. He catches the ball right there. Carrier is the guy who comes up and misses. So they had the angle on him. Then they both missed, and now there was no one between Sharp and the goal line. An injury on the field. See it right here. Now watch, Carrier's coming in from the tackle. He, for the tackle, he doesn't wrap his arm. Then when he doesn't wrap his arm, Sterling Sharp just absorbs the blow and then goes in a circle and then goes for the touchdown. And the complexion changes very quickly. 17-12 now. All of a sudden, the complexion of the game has changed. Green Bay only has 18 yards rushing for the Bears, 131 as they go for the extra point. And that makes it 17 13. 14 49 still left in this contest. 17 13. You know, Mark Carrier had a problem last week. Now, if you watch Sharp here, when he comes here, he's going to catch the ball. Carrier comes over to hit him here. Now, when he doesn't wrap his arm, and then Sharp can just move and go to the outside, but it really ends up in a double. You see, he gets by the first guy. Now he's going to catch the ball. Now, here comes Carrier. He doesn't wrap his arm, so Sharp just bounces off it and uses that, again, to propel himself for the touchdown. The 
Carrier is a rookie, and in the last two weeks, he's made two rookie mistakes. In fact, he was hurt on that play. Right. Last week, he let Willie Galt get behind him. This week, he read Sterling Sharp. He read the pattern, but again, he just didn't wrap his arm. It appeared earlier that Sterling Sharp might have been shaken up a little bit. He had bad ribs coming in when he carrier hit him but he seems okay now the Rams have tied Cincinnati so Sterling Sharp was hurt on the last play of the game last week with his ribs you said earlier didn't practice all week and that jolt the carrier put on him probably did hurt him but the 76 yard touchdown helped him get well in a hurry Deep to the Bears. It is Bailey. He's had a little alley. Out to the 35, a good return. Jackie Harris made the stop. Interesting that all the touchdowns that have been scored have been scored against the win. Well, you know, and, and, and it was so interesting that win, the Bears, when Green Bay had the win, the Bears had the ball for 24 minutes. And the Packers only had it for five minutes. Of course, there's there's a graphic that says that right there. And then when they go going against the win, then they get the big touchdown. Strange. First down bears their own 34. Contact with the win. Fires high. In the direction of Muster. Under pressure, uh, he was fall, he was perpendicular. He threw that one perpendicular to the ground. He he started to throw it, and then then when he stepped on his own foot, I think, and he went perpendicular. So what? Watch him right there. Someone stepped on his foot. Now what? See, it's Jim Covert is stepping on his foot. Now after that happens, he goes perpendicular. Look at him here. He's perpendicular when he throws that ball. It's hard to see from that position. Again under pressure. Pass incomplete. Brian Noble right in his face. He was not perpendicular that time. I mean, Covert made him perpendicular the first time, then that time he gets not perpendicular. <laughs> Watch him here. He's going to get the pressure on him, and it's just going to come straight up the middle. You see the delay? Noble delays. Now no one picks him up, and he comes straight up the middle, and he hits Arbaugh just as he's throwing it. You know, if that arm's not going forward, then that's a fumble. The arm is going forward, which it was. It's an incomplete pass. Third and ten for the Bears in their own 35. Thornton is the move man, and comes back back to throw again. Flag on the play. In the direction of Gentry. Incomplete. Again. This time it was Patterson in his face. John Patterson, and then... The Packers are doing the same thing to Tom Sack here that the Bears have been doing to Magic Man the whole game. And they may throw it and they may get rid of it, but they're they're putting a hat on him every time. Penalty decline. Ended up in the sideline out of bounds, and the illegal block back here, away from away from the uh, the return. I 
Jerry Seaman that ne uh, ne next year he's going to be the head of the officials. Art McNally is retiring, and Jerry Seaman's going to be the head guy. Microphone obviously not working. Probably a good thing his microphone's not working. coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Today's Duracell, the copper top battery. And by America's favorite light beer, Miller Lite, the sole sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. The injured starters that we featured talking before the game, Neil Anderson, 91 rushing yards, 29 receiving yards, a touchdown. Sterling Sharp has had that big reception. 76 yards for the touchdown. Tim Harris has eight tackles, one quarterback sack. So, so much for injuries. Uh, or so much for rivalries and what they mean. That's why you hate to see him over so quickly. I mean, I think that, you know, the fact that this is the last time the Bears and the Packers are going to play, I don't think that's the way it should be. The Redskins and the uh, Giants are going to play each other two out of three weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of think that there ought to always be like a good Packer-Bear game every year after Thanksgiving. Those old rivalries, they carry some magic with them too, don't they? Well, they do. I mean, and that's what, you know, gets a Neil Anderson to play like he does out here and, and, a, and a Tim Harris when he has phlebitis and hasn't practiced all week. And it's Sterling Sharp, who didn't practice all week with bad ribs, you know, catching a play and going for touchdown. First and 10 at the 18 for the Packers. Adrenaline's a great healer. Is it ever? 14, 15 left to play. 17, 13, the Bears lead. Thompson is the lone setback. Draw play, Thompson hit in the backfield and taken down by Singletary. Hit first by McMichael. I think the Packers are still trying to figure out where Thompson is going to fit into things. Here they've been passing the whole game, so they figured they're getting a big pass rush, so maybe a draw play would work. But Trey Armstrong just handled Mandrich on that play. I think Mandrich Played him pretty well in the first half. Trace Armstrong is winning the end of the game. Second and eight. Packers hit their own 20. Mikowski back to throw it. Incomplete. Intended for Perry Kemp, who had it for a moment and lost it. This, this is good coverage where the ball gets there and the, and the defender is on him and everything is happening at the same time. That was good coverage by Janelle Wolford. That's it. He is right there. There's no pass interference there. The ball, his body, his arm, everything got there at the same time. That's the second time Ken, Ken Rutgers has been in that position. Remember, he went down like that earlier and went out for a play and came back in. 13.33 left. A good time to keep your hands warm. 30 degree drop at least in temperature from yesterday. 17.13. Packers have the ball third and eight at their own 20. They trail by four. Alan Beindrad taking Rutgers' place. That offensive tackle on the left side. Anderich on the other side of Mikowski. Third and eight. There's a fired up Richard Dent. He's trying to get this crowd fired up. The crowd's trying to get him fired up. Let's see how he plays. He got a brand new guy, Beindrad, coming in off the bench having to block him. Interesting matchup. Maddox is a lone setback. Dent from behind. Mikowski gets out of it. Almost complete to Kemp, but he couldn't come up with it. You know, that's amazing how Mikowski scrambles. Of course, he didn't get anything, and they're going to have to punt. 
But how Kent was that close to Mikowski, Mikowski could feel it. Talking about feeling a guy breathing down your back and your neck. Mikowski felt dead that time. Bailey back deep for the Bears. Bracken the ticket. Standing at his own five. Pretty good kick against the wind. Bailey repeats his own 44. Bailey to the 42. Good return. Burnell Dent brought him down, but he puts the Bears in good shape. Game two. Eight o'clock Eastern time. Oakland won last night's game nine to one. Showed you why they're the world champion. That's tonight here on CBS. They just have too many weapons. Looks like it doesn't. It? Oh, what a hit on Anderson with no place to go. Brian Noble. Go, go. Again. Here's the dynamic coach of the Chicago Bears. This was yesterday at practice. That's his mother with her back to you. The son in the golf cart on the other side of the field. She's still very much concerned. Yeah, look over. Okay. I'll watch your arm. Eat my baby. Get here, <laughs> Hey, that was something to go out to practice and, and see Mike Ditka's mother there and all the energy that she has and the excitement. You know, and, and how excited she was about being there and being part of everything. Pass incomplete intended for Anderson from contact. And we asked his mother yesterday, how often do you talk to your son? I usually call him every Monday, Monday morning, you know, talk to him. Or he called me Monday morning, you know. And uh, I tell him to take it easy. Yeah. I tell him to quit chewing, just let go back to gum, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but sons never listen to mothers enough. You know? I mean, you always think of Mike, particularly you see him in the sidelines of play, you didn't think of him having a mother. <laughs> you go to practice and there's Mike and there's Mom. You're worried about it. This is Tom Zach. Out of the pocket, there's some room. Not enough for a first down but deeper into Packer territory. Roy Butler. Ten-yard scramble by Tomczak. Yeah, I, think, I think you see a lot of competitiveness here in a, you know, in a real rivalry. You see a lot of guys laughing with each other, too, because when you get teams that are this close geographically, you know, they see each other in the offseason all the time. I mean, all the golf tournaments and charity events and all these things, so... They're very, very competitive out there, but they also know and respect each other. This is going to be Kevin Butler from 51 yards. He's hit from 50. With the wind in this direction. Got it. There is one pumped up kicker. Yeah, head got a head butted. <laughs> Mad as adrenaline, that is pumped up. That guy could, uh, he could fight Buster Douglas. And look, he looks where the head went. Boink! <laughs> you can't beat that, a good head butt. That'll clean out the sinuses. Yeah, they're just as helping after that. It's at 12.30 Eastern time with the NFL today. Then in the first part of our doubleheader, most of you will see the world champion 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons. While some of you will see these same Green Bay Packers visit the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Then in the late games, many of you will see the NFC Eastern rival Giants and Redskins. 
battle in Washington, while others will see the Dallas Cowboys at Phoenix. That's all next Sunday here on CBS. You know, Butler's so fired up now, he may kick one out of the stadium. You know, isn't it funny how a kicker, he has a bad hip flexor or something, doesn't know how much he can kick, boom, boom, boom. Then they get a field goal like that, and then they just get so much boom stuff going, they can just kick it out of the uh, stadium. Still working on the referee's uh, microphone. Gary Seaman back in action. You know what they were doing there, Pat? They were all gathering around Gary Seaman. They had to change his mic, so he had to drop his pants a little. So they formed a circle around him. They're not used to it to be. Yeah. And then they got that mic. See, they got all that stuff underneath the pants. Got them wired up. All wired up. Wilson and Wartman back deep for the Packers. They better get a holder up there for that, uh, for that ball. Won't stay in the tee with this win. Need to have it blow over just as you go to kick it. Boy, you pull some stuff. That'll get to take care of the hip pointers and whatever you got. Out of the end zone. Yep. I told you he's like King Kong. This guy's yeah. so fired up, he can kick it out of the stadium. He's, that one went to South Bend. Just landed by a dome or something, a golden dome. <laughs> it's quiet at the dome today, I imagine. Packer scoring something. Some reach. Jackie first, put him ahead 3 0. Then Anderson, three yard touchdown. Jackie again from 27 yards. Butler from 50 made it 10 6 there. And 17 6. Tomzak on a rollout. Green Bay back. Made it 17 13. And now it's 20 to 13. Mikowski. Sort of a fake. Picked up about eight yards. Knocked out of bounds the ball, by Parker. Richard Dent. William Perry. Brought down by getting a little Dent. breather. He looks and like he's, he's well rested. I think that Perry is is as in good a shape as I I, I remember. And everyone's talking about how quickly he gets off the ball. He rotates in there with McMichael and Hampton. The three of them take care of those two tackle positions. There's Hampton, 99. Michael, of course, 76. Second and two. for a first down, a four-yard pickup. Block running at 10.44 left to play. Pretty good block in here. You're going to see right there, Dan Hampton, boom, Moran comes off on Hampton. They get a little movement there and come right in behind him. You see that's the center. They, they double-team Hampton is what they end up doing, and that got just enough push in there to get the first down. Packers have the ball first and 10 at their own 32. Over 10 minutes left to play. Makowski to Sharp to drop it. You know, sometimes, remember last year, the Packers winning all those games at the, at the end of the game in the last couple of minutes. And even remember against the Bears, they beat the Bears twice last year, but Makowski over the line or not over the line. And, Sometimes you get the feeling that the Packers may save the best for last. This is the trigger man, number seven. Now, but now that looks like a football huddle. You see those white jerseys? You got some mud on them, some dirt. The other guy's waiting for them in their black shoes. This is football. Four-man rush coming by the Bears. Armstrong almost had Murkowski. Harry Kemp was the intended receiver. And I think that incomplete pass, a big incomplete on second down, you give to Trace Armstrong because Trace Armstrong got penetration. He was in there on Murkowski when Murkowski didn't want to throw it. Watch 93 there. This is a stunt. He's coming to the inside right up the middle. You see, he's on him there. He has him there. Murkowski has to rush the ball. 
sack one, hurried 16 times, knocked down 10, had two batted balls. This has been a long day for the Magic Man. And to get the credit to McMichael also on that last play because he occupied two blockers that let Armstrong get loose. Well, most of the yeah, I wonder, I wonder if they're going to keep his pants on now. He's saying to disconnect it now. He's got a lot of guys working on him. Yeah. The guy to the right there, that's Pee Wee. What do you have to do to disconnect it, I wonder? Just pull the cord. Pull the plug. Siemens had a lot of road time here in this quarter. Back and forth to correct the problems with the microphone. Third and ten. We just can't get that equipment uh, straightened out. Third and ten from the 32. Ten out, three left to play, and the Bears leading 2013. The Packers had one back in the backfield, and I think he was going forward before the ball was snapped. He can go in motion, but he can't move forward, and I think that's what Jerry Seaman's going to call. Maybe an offset. Offside Richard Dent. And you're right, illegal motion, so they offset. of a catch though. I mean Kemp got open. Offsetting penalties. They'll just replay it. See the back moving forward? That was the Packers part. And Kent was the Bears part jumping offside, being in that neutral zone. So it's still third and ten. Packers at their own 32. And again, a flag is down and so is he. But a penalty marker down. And a flag. Yeah, it looked like Mikowski knew that, that because it was delay a game, so it was before the snap, so the play wouldn't count anyway. So the whistles blew, and then there was no play. That's so why he, he gave up. Down. Yeah. yeah. We know that he wouldn't do that normally on a third down, just give up like that. When they took too much time, that blew the whistle. So no matter what happens, it's not going to play. So they moved the ball back to the 27. And they make it third and 15. Clock running with 9 pins left to play. Packers using valuable time. Mikowski lost control of the ball, and down he goes again. I think the pressure that the Bears defense has been putting on Mikowski all day is starting to take a toll. They will have to punt. I mean, they have just had guys pushing him. They've had guys on his face. They've had guys knocking him down. And I'll tell you, it's just taking a toll. This game was going to be a game in the trenches. Thus far, the Bears have won the game in the trenches. Back in the punt. Bailey back deep. Not so good. But a good Packer bounce. Bailey gets away and they'll take over at the 41. 35-yard punt it turns out to be. The Bears 20, the Packers 13. 8.37 now left to play. Cincinnati, after being tied by the Rams, has taken a 31-28 lead. This all earlier today. The 49ers came from behind to beat Houston. So did Atlanta to beat New Orleans. First 
first and ten Bears at their own 41. First and ten for the Bears. Look at Tim Harris. He walked in to say something to Hilgenberg. Then he walked back out to his right linebacker spot. Wasn't going to count on yelling. Buster hit by his own man who was in motion. Hit by Morris before he got back to the line of scrimmage. The Bears have had more trouble with their motion guy. Remember earlier, uh, okay. the motion guy, it was Bozo, ran into the quarterback, and that time Ron Morris coming in motion ran into his own guy. They got motion coming one way, and it wasn't a traffic jam for the offense. Second and ten. Eight minutes now left to play. Maybe a loss of a couple. I think this is the thing that the you know Bears are trying to trying to keep the ball here because the Packers have to you know they need one touchdown to score and of course two scores to win this game. Bears are getting a little conservative here. I think that they need a couple of first downs. They may have to pass a couple. Third and thirteen. This would be the spot. You don't want to give Mikowski too many shots at you. to throw it to the left side to Thornton knocked out of bounds as the rain begins again Leroy Butler knocked him out of bounds they'll have to punt gain of eight By Butler. You know, had they passed on, on on first and second down using that same thing they would have been in a lot better position fourth and four Buford into punt it Query back deep to the Packers standing at his own 10. Blowing rain coming in again. The punt is blocked. Bears pick it up. Tiger Green got the hand on the ball through it. Picked it up for the Bears and gets enough for them. You get a first down. Hey, they talk about times in life when you need breaks. This looks like it's one. The Packers have to go for the block. They're trying to make something happen. Tiger Green comes in, stretches out, gets his left hand on the ball, blocks the punt. The Bears pick it up. And then Pruitt takes it for a first down. And it is a first down and the Bears ball. And that is something. And the Packers part, you did everything you had to. You know you had to get the ball back. You were going against the wind. Tiger Green does what he has to do. And then the Packers can't recover it. Tiger Green did the blocking. But the Bears got the break. It's first and ten Chicago at the Green Bay 46. Not only the break that Pruitt recovered the ball, but that, that he could, after recovering it, pick it up and run it for a first down. Play is being reviewed. We just got the word Jerry Seaman again, the referee. Microphone not working, but they're looking again. Still checking. The play stands. You know what I like about Jerry Seaman? He said, pull the cord. You know, and he knows that he doesn't, that the mic doesn't work, but he still keeps talking into it. That's good. I mean, it may, you know, like bounce off some satellite or something and, and work. What they were reviewing, Pat, was whether the ball crossed the line of scrimmage or not when it was blocked. And, of course, he was 15 yards back, so it didn't. Tom Zach. Zach. 
assist from Harris. You're going to see Brian Noble's going to come straight up the middle. They've really had a lot of success with this delayed flip. Noble doesn't come right now. He kind of fakes like he's going to drop back, and then, boom, he hits it after the back commit. Noble's had a good day. 6.18 left on the game clock now. Second and 20. Bears in their own 45. Now, what happens is, is the, the Packers were in a stunt. They had their lineman cross, and, and Matt Brock was the guy who broke free. Third and 23, Anderson gets the call and tripped up. Ball came loose again, but he was down. I think one thing, the district just wanted to get out of that one because too many bad things were happening. I think they have so much confidence in Neil Anderson. But a guy playing with bad ribs, that's a, that's a tough thing to do, too. Back deep is Buford. Less than five minutes remain. See, the Packers' defense has been rising to the occasion here. For another punt block. Good kick by Buford. Zone, they'll take over at the 20. Tonight, stay tuned after 60 minutes at 8 o'clock Eastern Time for Game 2 of the American League Championship Series. The world champion Oakland A's taking on the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park with Oakland winning last night's game 9-1. to one. Starting pitchers tonight, Bob Welch on the mound for the Oakland A's going against Dana Kicker for the Boston Red Sox. That's tonight at 8. Here on CBS, Bears 20, Packers 13 here at Soldier Field. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Now the Packers need some of that magic. This is what they pay the guy a million and a half dollars a year for. On the 20, first and 10. Rush by Dent. Hampton ties up two guys, Dent comes up the middle. He's trying to say that he had him. He was in the grass. See, Dent's still trying to get the sack. He's trying to say that, that, that Lukowski threw the ball away. He was doing anything except he didn't want just an incomplete pass. Second and ten. Back to throw is Lukowski. Sterling Sharp, the intended receiver, Stinson was to the finger. Batted it away. Heck of a play by Lemuel Stinson. Watch him just come in there and reach that right hand and knock it right out of there. I tell you, that is a tough thing to do. You say, well, why is it so tough? Because you can't hit the guy before the ball gets there. If you do, it's pass interference. You have to time the whole thing where you don't hit him, but you get to the ball. Third and 10 from the 20. Mikowski has not completed a pass since he hit Sterling Sharp with the long one, the 76 yarder. Mikowski deep, incomplete. Intended for Weathers. Good coverage by the Bears. David Tate was the closest bear defender. Here comes the punting team. 
I'll tell you, both of these teams in this fourth quarter, both of these teams have come through with great defense in this period. Look at that. Three guys all coming to the ball. Don Bracken. Back to punt for the pack. Bailey back to the Bears. And he has only 45. Against the wind. punch. It's the Bears 20. The Packers 13. High score at Anaheim. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. This game produced by Robert D. Center, directed by Sandy Grossman. NFL Today produced by Eric Mann, directed by Duke Strzok. Senior producer David Winter. Executive producer, Ted Shaker. Tom Zach. Flag on the play. Tom Zach kept it. Harbaugh started, went out with bruised ribs, and hasn't been back. Penalty against the Bears. I still like that, though, that, I mean, Jerry Seaman, you know, goes through the mechanics, knows it doesn't work, but he's still going to, he's still going to talk and give the signal. That's good. Hey, Mike did give air. I think has to be satisfied with this one, because last week, you know, he was beaten by the Raiders at their game. I mean, the Raiders beat him in the trenches. The Raiders ran on him. They didn't tackle. And now they're back to doing the thing that they really got him where they've been over the year. Back, back to Anderson. Anderson. Hanging on to the ball stopped by Noble and Nelson. You know, you just cringe every time Neil Anderson goes down. You can just darn near feel that body creaking and cracking and aching. I'm sure the question is going to be asked after this game and during the week. Timeout Green Bay. Why is he playing? Neil Anderson. Now bad I, knee and bad ribs. I think because he's a football player and uh, it's a big game, it's a rivalry, it's, you know, that it brings out those types of competitors. And it's the second time they played Green Bay. They already got him once. They don't play him again. The biggest games you play are the division games. Right. I think that's a big factor. And then I think everyone has so much confidence in him. And I think when he's in there, everyone knows what it is. There's two guys that have done a heck of a job this second half. Trace Armstrong and Richard Dent putting the pressure on Mikowski. Dan Hampton playing in his last year ever. Remarkable guy. Playing it's a feeling of relief that it's going to be over. And his brother and his uncle at the practice yesterday up in Lake Forest. That's some story about how he hurt his leg when he was in junior high. Well, it, Climbing up a rope, trying to get after his brother, and his brother was shooting at him with a BB gun. He fell off the roof. He broke his leg in all kinds of places. The doctor looked at it and said he couldn't fix it. James Thornton, the intended receiver, incomplete. But you know, I think that, that Dan Hampton has meant more than just being a, a defensive tackle to this team. That, you know, he's, he's been kind of the leader. You know, when you talk about Bear and you, know, you talk about, you know, words like grit and, and toughness and determination and, you know, a man and, and a, a bear and soldier you know, in the Central Division, you might just be talking about this guy. Third and 12, 3.57 remain. Balls at the 43-yard line. Here's contact. by Johnny Holland, intended for Kozlowski. I know what the fans are thinking here. The fans are thinking Tom Zach's trying to give this game away. And obviously he's not, but they know that the Packers are ganging up on the run. So if they can't run, they're going to have to throw the ball. And then on the, on the throwing, they're just giving a good pass rush and playing a soft zone defense, and they're not getting anyone open. So Buford comes on again. 
back. Three minutes and 52 seconds left to play. Bounces into the end zone. 43 yard punt by Buford. Didn't quite take the bounce as he wanted. Well, he had the magic against Detroit last week. This is going to be more difficult. Well, he keeps getting shot, though, because yeah, they, they keep stopping him, and then the Bears can't get up a first down, so they have to give it back and just keep giving them more shots. You're looking, I think if he's going to get it done, he's going to have to do it along with Sterling Sharp and maybe try and get another big one to Sharp here somewhere. Sharp comes wide to the left. Kent goes wide right. But they have to get Kent and Armstrong blocked. Now Woodside is the wide receiver on the right side. Bounces before it gets to Sharp. Yeah, I thought that he came off there and he was talking about throwing to Sterling, uh, Sterling Sharp. You can see him in the huddle talking about him there. So this is tough because the Packers have two guys given signals here, both the backup quarterback. So one of them is live and one of them is given a dummy signal. But at this point, more than the play, they need something that rises above coaching. They need something where someone make something big happen. Second and ten, eight straight incompletions for Mikowski. Deep and incomplete and juggled and finally it lays on the ground. I think that Mikowski has gotten to the point here, Pat, where he's just frustrated. That, you know, he's not getting the protection. They've been banging around all day. And he really doesn't have a lot of guys open. This game has just begun in overtime. 31-31 between the Rams and Bengals. Rams came from behind. They were down 21 to nothing. You know, that has to be tough on Cincinnati having a short week, having to play a team that had a bye, but then after a short week, getting into an overtime game. That'll send you. Weary with the intended receiver. Here comes the punting unit on again. Their defense has certainly done its job as well. And then the Packer defense has done its job. I don't remember the last time we've had a first down in this game. You know, you could say, boy, both those offenses sink in the fourth quarter. Or you could say, boy, uh, both those defenses were playing great in the fourth quarter. Bailey back deep for the Bears. Crack into punt. Good kick against the wind. Bailey signals fair catch at his own 44. The Bears will take it over 36 yard kick. 319 left to play. Bears 20. Green Bay 13. Sunday, the NFL on CBS begins at 12.30 with the NFL today, the first part of our doubleheader. Most of you will see the 49ers take on the Atlanta Falcons, while some of you will see the Packers against the Buccaneers, and then after that, the Giants and Redskins for Dallas and Phoenix. And it's
Nelson to the two. Stopped by Bob Nelson. Look at that. He, he practiced on Wednesday and Thursday. Didn't practice at all on Friday. We were out there yesterday, and he didn't do anything. And, uh, you know, said that he really felt sore. Didn't feel any better this week than he did last week. And then has this kind of day. Well, when I talked to him last night, he said, I'm not 100%, but all I really have to do is walk out on, on Soldier Field through that tunnel and see Tim Harris, and I'll be at 150%. Okay, and he has played like he's 150%, but you remember that one fumble that he had on a 50-yard gainer? I wonder how he's going to feel tomorrow. The competitors don't worry about no. tomorrow. That's so true. They really don't. Bears have run the ball for 192 yards, 38 carries. Packers 15 times for 32. This is exactly what they intended to do. I think when you get days like this, when you have weather, then those are the important statistics. You have to be able to run the ball. Well, you're going to get some days like this and worse. You know that. worry about you know, all those teams that go to run and shoot and all that stuff. You know, what do they do with these kinds of days when they're going against the wind? You need the old-fashioned football like yeah. the Bears, just that, you know, high formation, lead, big run. Second and goal from the two. just doesn't lose a game for him. The more important thing is Neil Anderson healthy. Can he run and play like that? And can the defense tackle and play up to the level that they're playing? Those are the two important things. Oh, you know, Mike.
like Dick has said during the offseason, the one thing we got away from last year was our team concept. Well, we had T-shirts made up for training camp, or we're in training camp, with the word team. Let's get back to being a team like we were. sharp but he's had the pressure on him hey, and you can't and you can't throw the ball with that kind of pressure I mean he uh, you know part of it you know he makes a lot of money and he has to do that and is expected to do the magic but he needs some help too they're still looking at that look at that here's the inside rush again at the top of the screen by Trace Armstrong Mikowski had just turned to look to the left when he got hit. I guess they're reviewing that play to see again the rule. If his arm is going forward, it's an incomplete pass. If it's not going forward, it's a fumble. And they ruled that his arm wasn't going forward. Mikowski's not even arguing. He's over there. I think he's just hurting. Look at this weather. You got rain going to the left and some coming to the right. I mean, the rain's coming down, doesn't even know. The wind is mixed in there. The rain, the rain doesn't even know which way to go. Sort of floating down. I don't think Mikowski cares. Talk about the pressure that Mikowski's had. Look at this, Pat. Only two sacks, so in the staff, it's not going to be, you know, look that big in the newspapers. But look, 20 times he's been hurried, 13 times he's been knocked down, two batted balls, one interception. But those hurries and knockdowns, where the Bears hurried him or where they knocked him down, that's 33 times where he didn't get to stand in there and throw the ball the way he wanted to. was a long review and I think I don't know it looks like the, it looks like they're saying it was a forward uh, pass they switched it well the Mikowski wanted that ruling I'm not sure he, he wanted to come to back, come back and in. do it again but again what they were saying is his arm was going forward so it's an incomplete pass so they reversed the call. That'll make it second and 10 from the 29. And Mikowski does come back. 27-13, Bears lead it with 2.36 left to play. We'll see if Mandarich can get Armstrong blocked this time. But Mikowski is up there pointing to his right block. That guy, number 93, block him. Incomplete to Haddock. I tell you, they got him blocked on that side, but it was like an avalanche. It started to cave in on Mikowski. Watch the right side there. The top. See, they start pushing, pushing, pushing. Now it caves in on him. So that flushes him out here to the left. Then he kind of has to go back and throw something out of there. 
12 straight incompletion. Third and 10 from the 24. Two and a half minutes left. There's a high couple of touchdowns. First down, clock running as they hustle up. 23 yard pickup. They may not get a playoff before the two minute warning. It's going to be close. goes out of bounds at about the 37 38 yard line and we do get the two minute warning with the Bears leading 27 to 13 at Soldier Field I bet you someday when they ask Don Mikowski the longest day you ever had in football, the longest game you ever played, he's going to say, back in 1990, played in Soldier Field. That was the longest game I ever had. You know, we see these plays, we looked at the average last year and the average this year, and we're about the same. In fact, we're going to have more plays in this game than was average last year. Off in the end zone by Stinson. No. Knocked down by the quarterback, Mikowski. That was a frustration tackle with intelligence. Frustration because he threw the interception. Intelligence because he hit him with his left shoulder. And a flag on the play. And then a second effort of McCaskey, did you see? Yeah. He not only hit him with the left, but then he hit him again. Actually, there's a personal foul on that penalty. On McCaskey. So you talk about getting the old triple dipper, you throw an interception, you make a tackle, and then you get a penalty called on you. But this started all day. I mean, he's getting so much pressure here. He felt it coming up. He knew after he threw he was going to get it because he'd been getting it all day. He just threw that one up for grabs. Hackers out of timeout. The Bailey. Scott Steven made the stop. Reason to smile on the bare sideline. He's had a big day. He has a lot of confidence. You know, to play out there in the corner, you have to be confident. Willie Galt got him once last week. But you have to forget about those. Simpson has done that. Packer. 
Richard Dent. He's pretty happy about his performance today. Well, he's the colonel, you know, and he has this this car. It's like a 1950 Lincoln or something. He had it all redone and restored. And he drove it to practice yesterday, and that thing is really a sharp-looking car, 1950. He was saying that that's his good luck car. When he drives it to practice, they win. He said, we're going to win because I brought that car. You better drive it every week. Tomzak. The seal. Lindy and Fatty. Frustrating afternoon for his offense and the Green Bay Packers. Twenty-seven thirteen then. The Bears will win it. 